Welcome everyone, uh, my name is Mohamed Omar. I will be doing a presentation on Sharia governance practices within Malaysian Islamic banks with a specific focus on Sharia committees. The presentation is uh, for a couple of minutes, so it's going to be high level. I will do a brief introduction and then just talk about some of the challenges and recommendations within this presentation. So essentially, if we look at the second slide here, just want to recognize the impact of COVID-19 which has affected uh, every industry uh, and Islamic banks are no exception to that. Uh, I want to highlight here that Islamic social finance is based on waqf, zakat, sadaqa and qard hasna as well. And these are strong tools for alleviating poverty and bringing economic growth within society. Therefore, a strong, dynamic and adaptive Sharia committee is needed to ensure these, uh, these principles are implemented within the world. So going forward to the uh, third slide here, I uh, just want to briefly talk about Sharia governance and Sharia committee within that context. So Sharia governance may be referred to as the mechanism of governing and guiding the Sharia committee in order to ensure compatibility with Sharia laws. Now, going to the fourth slide here, which is challenges. I want to highlight a survey here done by uh, PwC Malaysia. And this was done back in 2010, and about uh, 15 Malaysian uh, banks were focused on and interviewed. Uh, so some of the findings I would like to highlight here is basically that 70% uh, of those surveyed said that the Sharia, Sharia scholars are not involved in the audit process. 50% said that Sharia scholars do not review the audit report and do not follow up on queries with management. 30% uh, only agreed that there is a dispute res resolution process that allows management to resolve potential conflicts with the Sharia scholars in a structured manner. I would like to say that I think the most challenging issue encountered by Sharia committees is that their tasks require them to have practical skills instead of uh, just uh, theoretical knowledge. Uh, and I think a specific example to highlight here are the Mudarba deposits, which were structured to be an alternative product to fixed deposits. While it was structured based on Mudarba concept, which is a return to the Sahib al-Mal, which is the investor, uh, it's still made as competitive as a fixed deposit and is short-term in nature. As such, it would pose greater risk to the Islamic bank as a return to the Sahib al-Mal, the investor, is based on floating rate, while return from majority of their financing, the Islamic bank's financing activities, is based on fixed rate and long-term in nature. So a Sharia scholar would need to be well versed with these nuances. Uh, essentially, basically, an experienced SCC member, a Sharia committee member, would see these things from an end-to-end -end process. Now, going forward to slide five, I would like to go over the recommendations here. So it would be good if each Islamic bank were to have at least one senior scholar as their SCC member and the rest of the junior scholars can learn from them. This would be a more effective succession plan of, of these scholars. Malaysia has already restricted a Sharia scholar to be on the Sharia committee of one Islamic bank, and this is to curb any conflict of interest as scholars are paid for these uh, advisory services. Keeping in line with IFSA 2013, the Sharia committee should be placed below the board of directors and this is, uh, again, if you look at the chart, the org chart and recommendations, you can see what I'm talking about here. So the Sharia committee should be below board of directors in terms of hierarchy in the organizational chart. This makes more sense as the board of directors are the leaders of the organization and ultimately the decision makers. However, when it comes to Sharia committee, it should not only be represented in the board of audit committee and risk committee, as this would ensure a flow of information and processes being checked and carried in compliance, compliance with Sharia requirements. But also, it should be uh, above these two boards. Now, this is unlike the, corp, uh, the org chart that you would see uh, in the slide. So it should be above these two boards, as it is the authority on Sharia. This way, the three lines of defense, which is control, review, and audit, are within the observation of the Sharia committee. Otherwise, issue, issues raised to the Board of Audit Committee and Board of Risk Management uh, Committee pertaining to Sharia Audit and Sharia Risk may not surface to the Sharia Committee. In conclusion, I would like to say that given the context of the pandemic, 
it is still not too late for Islamic banks and regulators to create the capability, flexibility, adaptability with Islamic thought and jurisprudence, which links revised business models to a bank's risk appetite and management. The acceptability of Islamic banks as a better alternative to conventional banks in managing risk in the context of risk sharing rather than risk transfer and fairness of all parties in banking transactions could play a fundamental role in development of Islamic banking regionally as well as globally while navigating through the crisis successfully. Thank you very much.